Wow, welcome, welcome all to this beautiful uh, evening. I'm going to uh, um, let Catherine take over right away because I'm sure she's well prepared to <laughs> welcome us all into the round as well. So here we go, Catherine. Okay, it's January the 20th, it's Thursday, and we're in for a fantastic night. Strap in because we're going to take off with the launch of the Blue Mondays Anthology. I'm Catherine Rooney and I'm wearing my Technicolor dream coat, normally reserved for weddings, but this is an equally, if not more important occasion. So, um, when COVID struck, the irrepressible Rosalind Blue made a global poetry group from a local poetry group and we've been zooming for nearly two years and out of all this zooming we've become very close friends and we got together to create the blue mondays anthology it has gone on sale and we put the the name of the stockists and details of how to get it online in the chat now the county and city library really became frontline workers for poets during the pandemic, providing a variety of poetry opportunities, calling out for submissions, creating poetry collectives, and supporting our endeavours. One man who is writer in residence with Cork County Council for the last two years is the one and the only Matthew Geeden. He is a poet, facilitator, and shooter extraordinaire. His latest collection, Fruit, published by Servision, is available now. Proud to call him a friend, I invite him to launch the Blue Mondays Anthology. Take it away, Matthew. Wow, uh, thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, what a wonderful, lovely introduction. So generous as always. Uh, so yeah, initially just to say thank you all so much for inviting me here tonight to to share in your success and what wonderful success it is to see a, a new book in print uh, and also fantastic news that 50% of the proceeds will be going to the Cork Simon community, uh, such a worthwhile cause and, and a wonderful idea there. So yeah, I've written a few things down, so I hope you don't mind if I read this slowly, uh, slowly really for my benefit as much more than yours probably. Okay, so pandemic. Such a gentle word that has sharp teeth. It comes from the Greek pan meaning all and demos meaning the people. Truly it has affected us all. It's changed our lives in so many ways. I can't help but think of the Yates line from Easter 1916, all changed, changed utterly. And so a terrible beauty is born, a new world. And in that are other forms of beauty, not least in the artistic endeavors and initiatives many of us have resorted to as a means of coping, understanding, or explaining what's happened. Ireland has long been known for its poets and artists. And during the pandemic, many returned to the arts as practitioners. Online workshops, as Catherine has mentioned, blossomed and we all found new ways to keep the important conversations going. We're here tonight to celebrate and honor one such conversation on the initiative of Rosalind Blue and arising out of the long standing heroic O'Vale sessions at the Long Valley. The Blue Mondays writing group has evolved. How wonderful to see the physical fruits of words sown in the abstract fields of cyberspace. Wonderful too, that these workshops spread out 
from Cork to Canada, the United States, continental Europe, and even Bandon. Blue Monday, a song by New Order, or the supposed most depressing day of the year, or now a writing group, an anthology, a positive affirmation of creativity at a time when we need it more than ever. I'm delighted and privileged to be here tonight, virtually at least, to launch this terrific anthology of new and vibrant poems, to welcome into the world new lines, ideas and insights, to discover new voices. I already knew some of these fine poets, others I'd encountered on the page, and still others were new to me. Each has a clear, distinct voice. Uh, no doubt due to the, to the fine workshops that took place. Each poem succeeds in Seamus Heaney's words to set the darkness echoing. There is much that is familiar here too. Themes common to poetry of all ages and languages. Love, loss, despair, hope. We need to constantly revisit these concepts, remind ourselves of the power of language, to express emotions which sometimes seem unbearable. I note that the last line of the last poem in the book is, because love can never die. As restrictions hopefully begin to ease, we are perhaps moving towards better times. This anthology, a poignant pointer to an optimistic future. Congratulations to everybody involved for all the amazing poems and the artwork too, not just Mags's drawings uh, on the cover and throughout, but also everyone else who contributed to the artwork, which creates a unique piece of work, I think. I'm apologizing now because I have to slip away at seven o'clock, but I hope to hear as much of you read from this as I can in that time. So I'd like to now declare this anthology well and truly launched. Thank you, Matthew, for that wonderful launch. Wonderful. Um, I must just say a few thank yous now to Sinead, Barry, Eileen, Danielle, Paula and others in the county library. And in the city, Patricia Looney has been a tour de force. She initiated poetry in the park, Cork Words Anthology 2 and support for the Blue Mondays initiative where 50% of proceeds will be donated to Simon. Over to you, Patricia, for a few words, please. Thanks, Catherine. Um, I always hate following um, poets and writers when I have to speak, and I find myself doing it all the time. But anyway, here goes. Um, on behalf of Cork City Libraries, we are privileged to have supported um, Blue Mondays, and this is a beautiful publication and such amazing poetry in it. Um, some of you I know um, and have met, others um, I feel I know because you've taken part in some of the initiatives that Catherine has just spoken about, and the rest of you I look forward to knowing and seeing some of your work come in through that. And we are happy to say that Poetry in the Park will continue for 2022. And I would love to see submissions from the Blue Mondays um, from that going forward. And I'll be in touch with Rosalind about that. I think we're very lucky in Cork City to have such supports for writing. Um, of course, O'Vale, who you're all familiar with, Monster Literature Centre, Fiction at the Friary, 
wonderful to have the UCCMA in creative writing and all of this has contributed to such wonderful work over the past few years but as well groups like yourself supporting each other which has been just uh, so important uh, during COVID. Well, I'm also delighted that uh, the book that there are proceeds going to Cork Simon. Cork Simon, as it happens, would be our charity of choice here in Cork City Library, the one charity that we support. So um, it is wonderful that um, there is funding going towards them as well as a public library. We see it um, every day and we provide a space for people who are homeless and some um, other supports as well. So um, we're delighted with that. Um, just glancing through, the, well, I have read the book, but I don't want to, to pick out any particular poems because they're all wonderful. But I suppose um, a Dingle Gin and, and an Elderberry Tonic is something that uh, certainly appeals to me. And I also um, am very familiar with the South Lake Road and for summers down in Derry Nan and Carra Daniel, Skellig Michael. And that's also a beautiful description of, of that uh, rock and the, the granite droppings around it. So they're beautiful poems, each and every one of them. And we are delighted to be part of it, a very small part of it, but delighted always to support writers, both established and emerging like some of you. So well done. Thank you. Ooh, thank you, Patricia. Um, Ooh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Simon has always been a charity close to our hearts. I know from working in the city that the service is a lifesaver, <clears throat> literally to lots of people. Rachel Stevenson, I hope she's here, will now say a few words. Over to you, Rachel. Hi, everybody. Um, nice to meet you all, albeit virtually. Um, and thank you so much for inviting me to join you this evening in this lovely, what a great, what a big group as well. It's fantastic to see so many people attending. Um, this is the first uh, virtual launch of a book that I've been at and um, it's great. It's, it's a, a new thing, so it's fantastic. Um, I would, I'm really delighted that uh, the Blue Mondays group have decided to honour Cork Simon really um, and support Cork Simon through um, your anthology of poetry. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the ethos I understand is all about encouraging one another in the difficult times and that really resonates with us in Cork Simon where our ethos is around supporting people and you know encouraging them and helping them take back control of their lives um, and particularly over the last um, couple of years where we've all really struggled with with the pandemic and things and um, it's become ever clearer to all of us just how important um, home is and how when when the pandemic first started and we first had um, you know, we were first instructed to, to stay at home, to, to stay safe and stay at home. And for people who are homeless, it just, you know, really um, shone a light on how vulnerable and how exposed they really are. Um, so, you know, your support um, is just fantastic because uh, none of the services that Cork Simon provides is fully funded by government. Um, every single service we provide, um, an activity that we, we run, we have to pay for either to a greater or lesser extent. Some of them have received no um, funding from government at all. So uh, activities like um, your own anthology um, and, and you know activities like our, our one of your members, John Tynan is a great friend of Cork Simon and has been for many, many years. So um, activities like he has done in the past, like, you know, Christmas carol singing and lots of other things. That's really the lifeblood of Cork Simon. Um, you know, that's what keeps us going. That's what, keep, what keeps us being able to support people who turn to us for help. So 
we can't do anything that we do without all of you. So we really thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for um, your lovely anthology and for um, contributing to Cork Simon through the proceeds of the book. We really appreciate it and um, well done. I haven't seen the book yet, but I'm really looking forward to getting a copy and, and having a read through. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the poets. Each poet will read from a selection of their work in the anthology. I robbed Paul Casey's idea of reverse alphabetical order. So first up is the amazing Patricia Walsh. You can check out her chat book, Continuity Errors, her novel, The Quest for Lost Era, and her latest novel, In the Days of Fort Cortina, published in August, 2021. Take it away, Patricia. I'm not sure if Patricia has already made it, actually. Um, we, can, uh, we can move on, Sue, and I, I can come back to Patricia. Okay. okay. Next up is John Tynan. John Tynan is an award-winning filmmaker. His films have been screened at the Fastnet Film Festival and reached the semifinals in Stockholm, Berlin, and Madrid. An internationally published poet and songwriter, he co-wrote the winning entry in the 2019 Cork International Folk Festival Song Contest. Go, John. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> um, okay, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll read a selection of my poems. The first one I'm going to read is called Memory Tree, and I'm going to dedicate it to my son, George. Okay. Memory Tree. When did I last sit dappled in a tree? I look and want to say, child, remember now these moments as you climb high and free. Tomorrow's tomorrow is too late. But if I peel the bark and show you knots of momentary magic, you just ignore me. A sentimental notion dismissed by childhood logic. Tomorrow's tomorrow is too late. Too young to know the wicked grace of time. Unfair of me to ask that it should matter until you see yourself the leaves of roughest russet past your prime. Thank you. That poem was first published in the Broadkill Review. The next poem is called um, When Naked Branches Mourn. Uh, it came about when I was taking my thoughts on a meander down the Claire Boree. Okay. When Naked Branches Mourned. My ache, I clutched a shard of sacred burren limestone cold. On opposite sides of the hastening November night drizzled road, we walked in bleakest hurts so far apart, immeasurable void between our steps and shriveled hearts. And oh, when naked branches mourned, in silent grief, the blackest velvet cloak soft descending, on transparent thoughts now ascending. So, shedding my malice frost, I formed of feather, talon, and sharp eye to rise away from the hollow silhouette of our once lush love. And oh, the starry tears glistened. That was first published in a British literary journal called Inspired. Um, the next poem, thank you, Catherine, thank you. The next poem um, I'm going to sing, I'll let you guess where, where that, this came about, what I was doing when I came up with the idea for this. It's called Potato Picker. Day calls, unrepentant. Digging shallow to deep brooding. Brittle air sifts vapor from my breath. <sighs> Evanescent ghosts. Fork shares in my tact toil. Soil crumbles and soul tumbles. Denied tears nourish nothing. Propagate pain. <sighs> Tear blithely accepts and gives. 
scarified memories. Stalk comes soft, lift up, extract anguish, leaves brown blotch. <sighs> Telling of terminal love. So sense the earth spinning. Orbs dangle, goodness signals virtue. Salve for the suffering of blighted summer. <sighs> Emotional famine since you crossed many fields. I'll finish with this pain. Uh, this poem is called Pain. Um, and this was first published in Bindweed magazine. Pain. Pain is the futile stoking as the fire in your heart flickers out. Memory is the dimming experience of a worn out consciousness. Courage, that is the sense to forgive defeat by fear. Truth is accepting the need to lie to yourself. Faith is the blessing bestowed on the unquestioning. Conditional is the Holy Scripture shackling the brethren. Weakness is being held hostage by a need. Freedom is never needing to be loved. Thank you very much. Ooh, John. Bob, take a bow. <laughs> take a bow. Next up is Susanna Trizelletti. Susanna had her first introduction to poetry from her aunt, who used to recite verses of the Odyssey on a, as they walked to school together. So no surprise then that Susanna wows us with her fantastic, sensual and original work. <laughs> That's very generous of you, Katrina. <laughs> Thank you so much for this introduction. <laughs> okay, so my first poem, it's called A Summer Afternoons, and it's dedicated to my great auntie. My childhood is a small triangle of light, an enclosed wild garden where the nettle is high and the Judas tree looks back at you. I do not remember how many steps I needed to crawl to my great auntie's kitchen, but I can feel the roughness of the wood under my bare feet and hands while her voice leads me upstairs. She is the captain of my boat, the loud voice who knows how to grow tomatoes with no water and when to harvest grapes without touching them. Her nose is always into someone else's business and her shirt is bright white under the red lipstick. No ring on her fingers, and no safety belt while she drives. I sit on her side, pulling the foam out of the hot plastic seat of the old Renault. A new chapter of the Odyssey is unfolding from her smoky lips while driving in the dry river in the summer afternoons. The car bounces and bumps while we laugh and scream and the apricots fall from the basket in the back seat we we'll eat the dirt too. The femme fatale Circe turned Ulysses into a pig after he refused their love, him and his whole crew. I see Ulysses as a tall, hairy, bearded man with bad clothes and a sweet breath, like the fishermen we met at the beach where Ulysses faced Charidis. A world of sirens, dark and untouched, is left unsung by the poets. Where are the women in the fairy tales when the male completes the quest? They're making fried aubergines and stuffed olives that will feast in my mouth. I lose my shoes. She buys me sandals, red little sandals to make my feet bleed. I keep them with me in the sleep. Thank you. Um, this other poem is called In Prime and is dedicated to my friend Margaret O'Regan. 
<laughs> uh, which I love very, very much. Um, and she's, you know, an inspiration <laughs> to not just to me, but to a lot of a lot of women, a lot of people. In prime, the muses are dancing naked. The shadows are licking the trees. I hear her. Here she is. Her steps are singing the excitement. Her mouth is quick and wit. Salute her, for she is the woman in her prime. Silver silk surrounds her skin, gently rattling her voice reveals like the copper bells of a queen. There is no battle she hasn't fought, nor night or night she ever feared. When the fire is lit of tongues and blood and pain and joys for the loss of the family planning center in Taki Street. She has harvested the story of all women of all times, the unspoken truth and the glorious victories. Her ears open pedals to the inner needs. Never give up, she whispers. She eats poetry with lemon drizzle muffins at the sound of a passionate guitar the chants of the Debenham workers and the alliterations of late nights. She baptizes the wateresses one by one with the salted water of the well of Venus and buys them a pale ale at a Crawford and Co on a breezy autumn night. She breathes light and laugh with pleasure at her full life lived and were held in her palms the woman in her prime. What a fantastic tribute to the one and only Margaret O'Regan. <laughs> Next up, we have Moira Stevens. Moira Stevens was born in Belfast, grew up in Manchester, and now lives on the beautiful Isle of Man. Her poetry is an eclectic mix of styles and subjects. Her poems have been published in a number of anthologies, including Geography is Irrelevant, and wildfire. Take it away, Maura. Thank you, Catherine. Um, the poem I'm going to do today is uh, basically it's my favourite poem that I've written. Um, so I'm so pleased to be able to share it with people tonight. It was first published in um, Geography is Irrelevant Anthology, and it's called On St. Patrick's Isle, based on a Manx legend. On St. Patrick's Isle, when the night winds blow, secure the gate and go below, through twisted tunnels wreathed in gloom, deliver the keys to the captain's room. Returning then to fellow men who close beside the gate do wait, a cheering blaze to keep them warm, those who watch from dusk till dawn, till on one night of shrieking storm, from darkened door on silent pour, a monstrous hound with midnight fur stalks forth to follow to guardsman's door. Voices falter, laughter dies, as to the fire the black dog strides. Then, like any common cur, it lies and stretches on the floor, but on its hide and in its eyes, reflected light transforms and dies. Welcome hearth fires become instead fierce hell flames to burn the dead. Men draw back, companions seek near that fell beast, few dare to speak. But one callow youth, new to the fold, declares them cowards, men grown old. He alone won't fear to walk the empty halls neath castle walls. And so he snatches up a light and marches off into the night. The creature watches, silent, grim, then slowly pads out after him. Those within are silent now, cold sweat beads on soldier's brow. Then comes a sound no man should hear, an eldritch scream binds all in fear. They find the boy as morning breaks and up above the castle wakes. Lay him gently on his bed, though 
it is clear his wits have fled. Stark horror etched upon his face, held fast in nightmare's cold embrace, until at last at the third sunrise, he takes a final breath and dies. Now men won't venture on the ground for fear they'll meet the devil's hound, the mother do black dog of peel, and it should call their souls to heal. On St. Patrick's Isle, when the night winds blow, secure the gate, don't go below. Cross castle yard, neath frosted moon, deliver the keys to the captain's room. Thank you. Woo! Brilliant work. Brilliant. Ooh. Next, we have Simon Spichak, and he's joining us all the way from Canada. Simon is a recovering grad student turned journalist. He has been published in Being Patient, Massive Science, Futurism, and Elsewhere. In his own words, he is saving up for a raccoon farm and more cats. We can't wait, Simon. Take it away. Okay, unmuted, and now I'm just going to, oh, can someone enable share screen? I just want to share a video that goes along with the poem I'm reading. That'll be a task for Cork City Library. The host, um, where is it, Declan? Yeah. Uh, be lovely if you could um, let Simon share his screen, Declan. Can you do that? Thank you. Is it possible now? Uh, not yet, no. Maybe we can come back to me a little later. We can do that. Declan, are you hearing us? Um, we need uh, you to please uh, allow um, yes, screen sharing. We can hear you. We'll, we'll work that out so we can just give us a few minutes there and move on to someone else. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, next up is Anna Shepar. Anna Shepar is a poet originally from Croatia, widely published in New Ulster, Boyne Berries, Solstice Sounds, Good Day News, A Journey Called Home, and Cork Words. We can't wait to hear her fabulous poetry. Unfortunately, she can't be here, but Rosalind will now read some of her work. Rosalind, over to you. Yeah, hi guys. Um, Anna Spehar from Croatia, uh, my dear friend, she is sitting at home with a sick young daughter and um, that's why she is not uh, here herself. And I'm going to do um, uh, um, three of the poems that she has in the book. And I'd like to start one that uh, has um, everything to do with her daughter Erin, whom I know very well. I visit them every week. So this is called She Holds Her Hand and it's uh, dedicated uh, for my favourite girls. She holds her hand with warmth and care. The old wrinkled hand is stroking her hair and it takes me years back in time when the same hand then younger held mine. She held my hand, she wiped my tears, kept me safe throughout the years. That gentle hand never left my side. Oh, she held my hand with pride. Now their hands are intertwined. The circle of life is clearly defined. My future, my present and my past. The image of two hands in my heart, forever to last. And this poem was first published in a new Ulster. Uh, Anna, I think, is known uh, for um, writing love poetry to Ireland and to a love that can be uh, another you on the other side. So I'm going to read um, a love poem. It's called You Will Live Forever. <clears throat> you will live forever as long as there are moon and stars, as long as there's time, through my heart you'll come alive, on paper, in poems, in verses. You will live inside my rhymes, 
You will live inside forever. You will live forever, carved in my soul, written in the art. Your words, your eyes, your smile. You'll always be a part of my beating heart. You'll become immortal because love can never die. So that was uh, poem number three. And um, I'd like to uh, finish up with a poem called Be My Home. And this was first published in Bowen Berries. Be my home. Open your arms. Open them wide. Hold me, and there let me find my home. Open your arms, let me inside, for I've wandered too long by myself all alone. In the blue of your eyes let me find my calm, my tranquility in the warmth of your breath. Be my home after the storm, and give me com comfort, give me strength. Beautiful, Sue, thank you. I just want to shout out to see if Patricia Walsh is in the room. I have been trying to get her back in. I have given her the link again uh, on on the Facebook group. If someone could actually of the group maybe uh, get to the Facebook Messenger group and pass that on to the WhatsApp Messenger group for her, uh, that'd be lovely. Um, thanks. Um, sorry, she's not in yet. It seems. No, it's okay. And is Simon set up yet, or will I move on? Sorry, guys, Simon isn't set up because we haven't done this before on, on a group Zoom meeting, so we're not too sure. So um, I'm not sure if we will be able to do it. I mean, we I can see share screen at the bottom here, but when that comes up, it's just the screen that I'm seeing now. So I'm not. Can you can you make him a host? So what you do, uh, Patricia, is you go to that share screen thing, click on that little up arrow next yeah. to it. Yeah. It opens up a dialogue and then you see who can share in the second row there. It says only host, right? I'm clicking now on all participants. I don't know if I can do that. You're not your host as well. Uh, so yeah. that's the setting now, uh, one participant at a time. So Simon, try it. Okay, great. Let's see. Uh, perfect. I have something weird and wonderful ready to go Let's... take it away so great does everyone see the screen great thanks thanks ross all right let me just make sure the sound there is on share sound perfect so uh, my poetry is uh, inspired by weird things in the world, uh, being a scientist myself and also a huge fan of horror movies. This is inspired by this, and the poem is called The Thing. Slimy, small, wet and gray, an alien appearance so obscene. It's a great intelligence and without a brain could learn to efficiently navigate a maze or describe the optimal method to connect cities by train. What's the method to its madness? It consumes for learning, but is it born with an inherent yearning? Does it contain a great consciousness? Can it contemplate, calculate, and think, defying the definitions of animals, plants, and fungi? What is this thing teetering on the very brink? It's found feeding on mildew and fallen trees to grow and expand into the forest expanse. Its chromosomes recombine, mix, and genetically prance, generating hundreds of simultaneous sexes, defining, defying our natural knowledge and expectations, each is without words, extends bridges to transfer gaps in information, an all-consuming, broadening force, but not invasive. Or alien thrived and created on Earth. Perfect homeostasis. Millions of slimy cells work in unison without arms, legs, livers, kidneys, or eyes, moving by extending slimy fingers. Philopodia. The thing is not a nightmare from a John Carpenter film, but an elegant organism called 
my Setazoa. That was something. Wow. <laughs> Worth waiting for, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Let me just stop sharing. Perfect. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Awesome. Awesome is the word. And guess who's going to follow Simon? Catherine Ronan is going to follow Simon. Oh. Um, I am Catherine Ronan. I perform on open mics to international audiences, and I'm a member of multiple poetry collectives. I'm a regular contributor to Oveil, and I'm on the Debarra's Spoken Word team. I've poems published in multiple anthologies. I won the Winter Solstice competition and helped curate Poetry Town Bandon for Poetry Ireland in 2021. My first poem is uh, for my good friend, Michelle, who died last October of cancer. And it's called Last Party. All the stars are out. We are two moons now. My breast in your pocket, sleeping with the sea, laughing with shells. We stirred many purple memories in our coffees, licked biscuits in the rain. Spiky as a golden sun, you appear on my desk cornered around our last party. Stay until I see you again. Thank you, that's one. My second poem, this is my, I'm only going to read two. My second poem is, was chosen for the launch of Bandon Poetry Town. And um, it's about Cleana. Now, before we had St. Patrick, we had the pagan goddess Cleana, who was the pagan goddess of West Cork, which is where I'm living. So Cleana. Now we are free to kiss ancient mouths in our time, sweet apples from a golden tree, wake alive, healed. Trembling steel trays, land of concrete promise, underneath the calico blanket, everything revealed. Three birds sing Blarney. We hear them in lusty stone, for all the world is red in white matted hair. You rise from the waves, kiss O'Sullivan's cheeks, wet feet in West Cork, fairy of the hills, never too weak to speak. We hear you on the tides, whispering through the trees. Cleana, queen of the banshees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, next up we have Margaret Creedon O'Shea, or Mags as we like to call her. So M Margaret Creedon O'Shea has won prizes in art, poetry and songwriting, including City of Culture Poetry and Mother Jones Song Competition. A master artist, the cover and our portraits bear witness to that. Her latest poetry film is in collaboration with Colin Scully and it's called Stills. And we are in for a real treat at the very end of this launch because Mags has composed an original song for the Blue Mondays. So go Mags. Thanks a million. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great, Catherine. Fantastic. Uh, lovely poem. This poem is written for my son because he was a very enterprising young student and he worked very hard as a golf caddy, but as a, as a multi-instrumentalist and a DJ. So this is him coming home at night to go to college in the morning. The drums for Robert. Hearken, here come the drums. My son's arrival announced. Bush telegraph to the privet hedge. Rumbles to the cattle grid. Doonch doonches his way up the drive. Swinging past the branches, he relaunches his cargo of sonar lunar capsules. Boomboxing his way home. Windows down, he comes aground. Dims his speaker's surround sound. Their primal equinoctial sound dream screen. 
in a, sorry, can't be, in a bass box, in a treble, in ultravox, full swing. Silent now, black felt has muffled its nocturnal screams. Ah, sigh out at ease, I breathe, he's home. His martial arts are humped up back inside. His Behringer sleeps beside some mic. He rests on a velvet pillow, his bland pleasure dome, to sleep his dreams with two hours till morning. At last, mise en scène. Set piece, every number played and at peace. Dingle Gin and Elderbury for my darling daughter, Miriam is with me, home from the Gulf. We brought them back to their granddad but I own a skull for many years. And this was when mom was left to have one drop in the gin, Dingle Gin while they had the lemonade. Dingle Gin and Elderbury. Turquid mint is stripped from our sea this day. Only putty gray drapes the waves. A platysma on Visera. A cream lace mantella on the wash of each crest. Undulating, ululating ghosts. Fluid walls shed their ebbing power past us on our transient headland of dust. Salted winds hush. Soft dunes, tunes of dunes and rushes whisper the fuchsia kiss Mount Grisha in a hush. Watching through the stillness, hidden eyes, child's eyes see beauty too and rest. The sea breathes through the sky at dusk. Inward scented spirals of shells and risks. Then a tingle of refreshing tang on an afternoon as cool as the South Pole in sweet elderberry flower and dingle gin, sipping in the warmth of little smiles. Arctic daguerreotypes, 1911 lithographs by someone they named Street for, Streets for. Inversion fog hung low in the hills, near Lispole, wade in to where the low heart fills with seasonal frisson of anticipation. I sing, oh, the dingle gin has a ring to it. Sure, it wakes me want to sing from it and nibble the cool lemon rim of my glass. Sing jingles of dingled Christmases past and present now, the dream I had then, and closing my eyes, I see them again. First look from each child that stole my heart. For Miriam. <laughs> Thanks, Mags, and we look forward to your original song at the end of the launch. Can't wait for that. Next up is Margaret O'Regan, the one and only. She's a lifelong socialist activist, member of Ovale, and co-host of Debarra's Spoken Word. Her work covers a broad spectrum of life experience, from erotic poems to those that address social injustice. She is our very own pocket rocket. Take us to the moon, Margaret. Well done. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I'm no longer, of course, the co-host of um, Deborah's spoken words. I'm now one of the team and the team is growing and a lot of us, including yourself, Catherine, are here tonight, including the founder of Deborah's spoken word. Um, um, where is he gone? From my screen. Nick is um, right, right, right below my screen. On oh, my he's screen. Yeah, I spot you now, Nick. Um, so Nick is the founder of Deborah's spoken word and a lot of us here are included in the team in that. Um, from now on. Um, anyway, I'll just read one of the poems. Oh yes, and I must thank Susanna for that lovely poem. Um, thank you, Susanna. Now this one is just one poem out of the book. It's called Love Undiluted and it's an acrostic poem. Love undiluted. Love when it embeds, when it embodies, ought to be known, ought to notice velvet-like softness, enveloping the mind and heart. Under the skin, under the rim, naked desire seething within, dreamily sending high voltage signals in sparks and synapses, connecting, lustily fusing, 
cylinders firing, undulating, free-floating filaments, terminal throbbing, primed and longing, excitedly rushing towards neurotransmission, dripping, gushing in rapid release. Thank you. Woo, that leads us up on a jang, a cold jang right now. <laughs> That's the variety in the book. <laughs> <laughs> now, next up is Ada Moyles. She is our bright young star in the Ukraine. She can't be with us this evening due to work commitments. A regular at Ovale and Blue Mondays, Pam Campbell will read her fantastic poem called Slender Grays. Take it away, Pam. Okay. This poem that I'm going to read in Ada's stead was born out of a conversation we were having in uh, one of the Blue Mondays meetings. It was about my desire to find a, a peaceful solution to get rid of the mice I could hear scratching in my daughter's um, New York City apartment walls. And Sue suggested I address their higher self to leave. And Ada agreed with this nonviolent approach and wrote this for me to sing to them. So here we go. Slender grays for Pam. Mice in the walls to you I sing. Sit quiet while I wonders bring. Hear me and follow my advice. I'll tell you what is best for mice. Out with you and through the door, the traveler finds fun galore. The sitter in the wall will die of mouse trap. I will not lie. Out through the door and with the sun, you travel must till day is done to rivers golden, filled with cheese, with cheesy banks and cheesy breeze. Slender graves, you scratchers dear, wall disturbers, bedtime fear. I mean you well, but little things in this house, you are no kings. Mice in the walls to you I sing. Sit quiet while my plea I bring to rivers golden running cheese. Tomorrow travel pretty please. Out through the door and with the sun, you travel must till day is done. To rivers golden, filled with cheese, with cheesy banks and cheesy breeze. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo Ada will be so delighted when she uh, sees this fat pan and what a fantastic job you did. Uh, Patricia Walsh is having trouble joining us, so I'm going to read one of her poems, but I'm going to recap on her um, fantastic career so far. Uh, Patricia Walsh, you can check out her chapbook, Continuity Errors, her novel, The Quest for Lost Era, and her latest novel, In the Days of Ford Cortina, published in August 2021. So I'm going to read a, read a poem that I really love of Patricia's. It's called The Wrong Suicide. Not what we were looking for, a turgid joke, loving without borders, almost a criminality. Too underqualified to call a starry halt, accidents of geography cutting down trees. More sardines, the better, living in its own sin. Running into administered disaster over coffee, eating and drinking perfectly, so designed, evacuating the din, walking home despondent, inches taking miles, rosy crucifixions stayed. The outdated poisons, better to make a start or a means to an end. This is revenge porn, coffee not running cold, no chance to do so, watching melt downs a sight to readily behold biros and paper cannot make up for lost time having great times at this one's absence disposable kisses in way of perdition 
concentrated sentiments rock again and roll, lighting into persuasion, good for another day. Thank you, Patricia. Now, next up, we have Anne MacDonald. Anne MacDonald is an Irish spoken word poet, dramatist, artist, and teacher. She's a great believer in the power of poetry to heal. Her debut collection, Crow's Books, is out now at Shabbat Press. She's going to treat us tonight to what she says herself is a coming of a certain age poem. So take it away, Anne. Thank you so much, Catherine. I'm delighted to be here tonight. And when I came to Dublin for the very first time, uh, I worked with Simon Community. I did two six month stints and oh my God, what an amazing organization it was then and what an amazing organization it's become. So thanks so much. Uh, and yes, this is my coming of age poem. And um, I hope that the women in the room will identify and for the men, it might be a little insight into um, what, what we suffer as women. And it's called The Day Is Waiting. I wish today for the jackdaw who has found his voice and chosen to greet the dawn with his own rendition of the morning chorus to fuck off to the backfield at least until the rest of us have realised it's morning. Yawning through a cup of tea, far too strong for me, the bag left in too long. I watch fat pigeons eat fallen scraps of fat balls pecked to bits by greedy starlings on the wet grass. Is a bit of kip while it's still too dark. Really too much to ask. Now I know he or she is probably new to the world and thinks they are the dog's bollocks of an alarm clock but they could call their heads off in the garden hedge or trees of nearby woods instead of the ledge of my bedroom. I assume the other birds wanted to shut the fuck up too. The blue tit just wants to eat a bit of breakfast at the feeder. If I didn't know better, I think the pair of doves were hung over, waddling around on the wet grass. We can't keep this up, I tell the jackdaw through the glass. He or she just turns its arse to me and calls away to start the day with notes that scrape the inside of my brain. And I know that no matter what I say or do today, tomorrow morning we'll start the whole sorry interchange again. He or she will sing the arrival of the dawn out of tune out of fucks to give for women of a certain age whose only chance at sleep is right before the day breaks. It's like they're saying, get up to fuck, the day is waiting. Now, deep in my heart, I know the bird is happy. And when my tired bones and foggy brain agree to write off the sleepless night, I'll see the gift of dawn I have been given. And I know the singing Jack does right. <laughs> we love that one, Anne. Thank you. Next up is Augustina Edeola Jekenu. She's an international writer with a velvet voice. She typically writes about the world of shame, taboo, shadows of society, the menstrual cycle and the rhythm of the womb. You can find her on Facebook and Instagram, but I am not lying. Here comes the velvet voice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, everyone. You should all be proud of yourselves. Fantastic poems going out today and uh, just so happy to be here. The first one I'm going to read is A Fire Upon Water, and this was written about me learning to embrace my feelings and love myself. Alas, inside the shell, there was a heart wounded, kept in place in a sea of salt. Salt from the tears that shed inside the cage which never found their way out. Hot 
so hot it created a fire, a fire upon water. This fire is the warmth that started the reaction, the need for change. The one where I decided to live and do for myself. Tears are liquid gold, some say. Tears are expiation and cleansing, I say. Cleanse me from my inside, cleanse me from my heart. Help me to do and be better. Show me what it means to love me. Let me live with, from and in love. So much love, tears of love that I could pour a cup and get drunk from. Thank you, soul. You are tired, but you still have work to do. Amen. The second one I'm going to read uh, <laughs> is called Shitstorm. Um, this came out of, well, it started with a conversation I was having with a friend of mine where I was basically complaining and they were complaining about how just things just keep going wrong and things keep falling apart. And sometimes you just feel like it's very overwhelming and there's no escape, right? So I'm sure we can all relate to this, especially in the last two years. And I hope you enjoy Shitstorm. I hardly have a choice. I need to brace up, got to keep my shit together. It's a difficult burden, a hard place to be in, but it'll all be worth it one day, I hope, as I always try to remind myself, the future is better. Hope is the currency I squander like it won't run out. But it's hard to keep shit together when the shit is purging and pouring out nonstop, like my tears and the fears that keep me up at night or wake me up before the dawn. Sinking, stinking, smearing, swimming in a deep sea of shit. So much shit you can't see past it can't escape it, can't clear it, can't flush it, can't bag it, no drainage hole, no reliable plumber to call, all the plumbers are busy because there's a shit pandemic. House is full of shit, people full of shit, media full of shit, I am full of shit. Yet, like sweet corn, I refuse to be broken down, digested. <laughs> I'm somehow this ray of yellow light praying i'll be all right a small speck waiting and hoping i'll eventually find the exit hole and unblock it with my two arms and maybe my feet and perhaps some might drain but what i really need is lots of rain a total washing of healing loving compassionate rain floods of it to flush it Thank you for listening. Woo. Now from one velvet voice to another velvet voice, we go to Pam Campbell. Pam Campbell is a daughter of the Appalachian Mountains in the USA and is a regular contributor to Oveil. Her work has been published in the Oveil Five Words Anthology, the Lexington Poetry Month Anthology, Pine, Mountain, Sand and Gravel Literary Journal and Volume 24, Appalachian Witness. This is going to be an absolute treat. Take it away, Pam. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I want to dedicate this reading to my Aunt Edith, who recently passed from this world to the next. She taught me how to tell time, how to tie my shoes, and she brought boxes of books every time she came to visit. Um, no, no hesitated on my tongue, stumbled into a disguised yes way too many times, yesing me into nothingness. No is a complete sentence, says my friend Leon, needs no qualification, weakening its well-muscled position. Yet the naysayers gather, grumbly grammarians claim that no cannot stand alone. They preach a holy trinity. A complete sentence requires a subject, a verb, and an object. I disagree. No determines, no decides, no stands alone. 
feet planted firm on her ground. I pulled newfound courage covered with nose over my second chance skin. Lots of them, a preamble to freedom, all standing alone. Nose that simmered, nose that stewed, nose that were bold. Yet, grammarians still drone. The shortest complete sentence in the English language is I am. But is not no holy? No is the bone of I am. It's resilient, pliant boundary, allowing that which is good and true to thrive and knowing away that which crushes. No is whispered by the broken. No is sung by the hopeful. No is the sweetest harmonic. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, let's see. <laughs> Thank you. And then my second one is um, uh, really for gratitude out of uh, a group of folks, um, largely from Cork, which I hope to visit one day, and, um, and then internationally as well, uh, the folks that came in. And it's titled Blue Mondays. Dear friends, two dimensional torsos shaded in real and imagined backgrounds across my computer screen. I am robbed of your living presence, stretch of skin, tone, and touch. What defines you then to me? Your voices, true chromatic scale to human starved ears, dialect curved, pitched high and low, sing you to me. Ada sings without a tune guitar, Dissonance determine truth-telling tones. Catherine sings laughter and penetrating heartbreak. John sings a pagiatura, wry twisted notes, deepens to heartwood, magok. <laughs> Max sings slides, dips, growls, pure tones, loss and despair, reclamation and joy. Margaret sings, pick and stand, girls and justice. Sue sings subtleties of blue, bruised and battered, raised and redeemed, blue scarfed freedom. Friends, one day I will see the three dimensional you, but know this, I will close my eyes to hear the truest of tones that make blue Mondays the best kind of blue. Love, Pam. <laughs> Thank you. So sweet. Thank you so much. So sweet. Dear Pam, we all love you. <laughs> love, Blue Mondays. <laughs> now, next up is our star, uh, our facilitator of the Blue Mondays group, Rosalind Blue. Rosalind Blue is a poet and translator from Munster in Germany. She now lives in Cork, where she transforms our lives with her performances and spirit. She's been published in Southward, Revival, Cranogue, and A New Ulster. Her collection, In the Consciousness of Earth, was published by Lapwing Press. Since 2020, she facilitates the Blue Mondays writing group. You can find her on Facebook and YouTube. So strap in now, lads, for we're about to take off with the irrepressible Sue Blue. Take it away, Sue. Thank you so much, Catherine. And thanks, first of all, I'd like to really thank everyone who is here tonight, uh, because where would poets be without an audience? Absolutely lovely um, uh, to have you all here. I want to also thank everyone involved in the project. Um, and first of all, I'd like to thank very much Patricia Looney from Cork City Library, because I think without the encouragement of the library's support, we would not have actually really gone for it. Uh, so thanks very much for that. Uh, thank you also to my dear co-editor, John Michael Tynan, because uh, we've had such a wonderful way of working together. The flow was awesome and uh, it was, yeah, it was just the ideal kind of pairing to work with. Thank you so much, Mags, 
for umpteen tries and, and umpteen uh, versions of the cover before we arrived at this one and your patience with that. Thank you so much for all your portraits. And also, um, may I mention uh, that your song that you're going to be doing later was also donate, uh, collecting donations for Simon. So uh, uh, that's fantastic to know. And um, uh, then I'd like to thank all the 14 poets involved um, because it's you who are coming to the Blue Mondays, it's you who are bringing your poetry and it's you who are bringing your knowledge um, and uh, also your openness. Uh, so like we really, um, we really have become friends out of this uh, connection because sometimes we lay ourselves quite open with certain topics. Um, and last not least, I would like to thank Matthew Geddon, who's not here now anymore for launching the book so beautifully for us and uh, Catherine Ronan for uh, doing the emceeing uh, for us. So uh, last, um, I, it's, it's up to me now to do um, the last two poems before Mags closes us out with uh, some music. And uh, the first poem I would like to do um, is um, born out of uh, a prompt that we had in the group and uh, uh, the first, there was actually two on the same night, and the first prompt was bed, and the second prompt was spirals. Spirals. That day, the arguments flew back and forth again, round and round, spiraling deep into the night. There is never just one involved in conflict. As we finally lay in the bed, both naked, backs turned, each on the outer edge, I whispered, anyway, this is not love. That's when you cracked, jumped out of the bed, yanked me out by my arm, nude as I was thrust me against the wall and battered me with your fist. My skin too bare to protect me. My arms too short to stop your thrashing. My eardrum too weak to break the thrust of your blow. I had only my eyes to seek yours and hold them with love. The only thing I knew might help now, love. As morning rose raw, after two hours sleep, my head burning, my head burning, my head droning and pea warm air seeping from my left ear, I failed my driving test. Now a trace of silver hair in my reflection and no more spirals. I bless myself still every day that I did. I think I actually forgot the main core, one of the one of the things core core. I'm going to go back into that bit. So I failed my driving test. And winter turned spring in the throes of spiraling, eroding emotions before I was strong enough hurt enough to make the break finally. Now a trace of silver hair in my reflection and no more spirals. I bless myself still every day that I did. Sorry very much about that stumble there. It happens everybody, I guess. Um, so <laughs> Um, yeah, and the topic was abuse there, obviously, and um, when we share deep topics like that, we, we really, um, yeah, we really connect, and um, so it's not just our knowledge, it's also the, the willingness to be open and share that level that uh, has connected us, and there is a general um, um, attitude of uh, agree to differ, so we have very various different uh, opinions, generations, cultures involved, and uh, the debate allows for a lot of uh, different views. So that's the character of our group. And with that, I would like to come to the last poem of 
uh, of the night before uh, the musical uh, contribution. And this one was also written to a prompt uh, of the group and it's called My Other Self. My Other Self is a night owl, hushed and swift upon her wings, spread out, sailing softly until the hunt is on. Then, like a dart, silently, swoops down in stealth, wings tucked streamlined, drops from the starry sky beneath a tacit moon. My other self is the mouse, darting beneath the roots, digging tunnels converging, my nest nestled in a cave, entrance and exit leading upwards moonlit to the woods above the ground with rocks and leaves to hide there is always a way out my other self is a tiger stripy paws padded smooth as silence raw as wrath Slick as the supple night that calls the hunter to the bait. Beating pulse, its death cry echoing, while my heart steadies under the warm current of blood. My other self is a spider, arachnoid speed on hairy legs, weaving the magic, a sticky patch, an octopod waiting with patience at the loom. Stretched out in blind sight, designed to catch only the best, designed to leave a bite, a mac deep and scary. My other self is the night, itself soothing against the gleaming light of day. Its quiet satin flow allowing for the song of the universe to pierce the darkness, come through to me, my tiny receiver nearly burning from the brightness of its music. My other self is an angel. The essence like liquid light flows through my veins as it flows through yours. And my wings, wide and white, carry me to where I'm needed, to you. As I touch you and wrap you, my feathers soft as a night owl's, this light sparks over. My other self is you. Thanks very, very much. Thanks a million. Um, and with uh, that, I would like to lead you over to Mags for her song um, that she has written for the Blue Mondays. Um, and it's um, an absolute treat, Mags, to have you um, to, uh, lead us out of this beautiful night. Thanks very much, everyone, for listening and absolute treat now with, uh, with Mags and the music. Thank you, everybody. It's a beautiful night of poetry. And um, the, the, actually, you know, I'm honoured to be, I'm not a professional musician, I'm honoured to be asked. Um, Sue initially asked for a song, um, Sleep Regime, because it's a composite of five word challenge, including sleep and regime. And we did one night for the five word challenge. So it's, it's a real essence of our writing in Blue Mondays. But uh, it also was put to music subsequently by the, my songwriter, Park Songwriters Club, who asked us to write a piece of music in the genre of our favourite artist. So I chose Django, I know more likes by Django too. And um, so it, the, I just reconstructed it, rewrote it, and added a variation with the unique little foibles and genres of each writer. So they recognise themselves in this. Hopefully now my guitar will behave. <laughs> And take a deep dive into the light And fathom what is written by the scribe Hidden in the blue moonlight Have a blue, 
moody blue so Monday Dove low low into a pool of indigo Where the Asia dreams are not what they see Down low inside the ocean of the soul We have Ukrainian villanelles We'll all call what's a Paul Gazal as well as it a guzzle What's a Patrakian sonnet Hempam sing Appalachian bird songs on it. We'll all row with John to Mahalmara, to Blue of Larry's Loch Aldua, to drums of the Banshee Queen, the Celtic goddess Catherine Cleaner. Patricia digs the archaeology. We'll excavate her latest odyssey. Adiola juicy is up biology to aid us did as cacophony. Ooh. We make a blue rap rhapsody, a blue moon rhapsody. We mix elixir of blue ocean with an Oregon love potion. Simon's Pachak will mix two Annas, Anna Specher and McDonald. To make an ode to Auberginas by Sicily's Trophelina. But they a blue moon rhapsody, a rap, rap, rhapsody. Cause we need a new sleep regime. One that involves blue Bombay suffragin. We'll order up some oral messaging. For you must whisper me your sweet nothings. We require some tea and sympathy. I require some of your empathy. For I am sat, I'll tap the Gucci energy. For you must whisper me your sweet nothings. Oh, give and take, soft hearts don't break. They're just melted and remolded. Take our time, admit poultry crimes. They'll be parted when they're scolded. Ooh, awful naughty. Bezier, Sherry, and Moore, do not demur. Indulge me just a little. Give me sugar, my pleasure, d'amour. Handle carefully, I'm little. Coming soon, an aging honeymoon. Enough for their omnibus. And we will have a great franchise, a new franchise, just us. I need a new sleep regime to remodel and start again, to refresh the settings for a brand new blue screen. For you must whisper me your sweet nothings. We'll have a new blue Monday. Can we meet on a secret night? And take a deep dive to the blue moonlight and cover what is written by the scribe. Ooh. And have a blue dee doo blue soo Monday. Go low into a pool of indigo where your Asia dreams are not what they seem as you dive into the ocean of your soul. With a blue, blue moon at night. We'll have a blue, blue Monday. We'll meet on our secret night. Take a deep dive till the blue moonlight and cover what is written by the scribe. Hidden in the blue moonlight, you'll write a blue Monday night. <laughs> oh, my love to all of you. It's hard to keep the guitar in tune. <laughs> Thank you so much, Meg. Thanks a million, everyone. And um, I would just like you to, uh, to give another uh, shout out um, 
um, for the PayPal link we have been posting in the chat uh, because you can order your book uh, through the email. John will get onto you then and uh, you can pay through PayPal. Uh, that link has been plastered all over Facebook and whatever other uh, uh, social media the other group members have um, taken care of. So 50% um, in aid of Cork Simon uh, and the other 50% and not any less uh, uh, valuable as a cause, you know, supporting the artists and poets involved. And thank you so much in that sense as well from Cork City Library. Pam, uh, Patricia, you have been an absolute blessing for the city when it comes to uh, you know keeping poetry and literature alive throughout. So thank you so much for that. Um, thanks everyone. What an honor to have been part of this project and it might become something that we do again. And maybe last not least, a great, great bula bus to all of us participating, uh, to Mags herself uh, and to um, everyone participating in the readings and uh, all the different roles we have had during this project. Thank you so much. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> Just to say, Roz, that uh, we can be contacted on bluemondayswriters at gmail.com as well. Yes, and also you can find the group on Facebook. It is set as a private group, but it's uh, uh, visible, so you can find it. Um, and um, if you uh, want, to, if you can't, then uh, contact me directly, uh, Sue Blue. Let me know, you know, especially if it's in relation to poetry and stuff like that, uh, that we know each other. I'm always more comfortable in, in, in knowing who, I, who I'm befriending. So that'd be lovely. And then um, I can tie you in to everything. So, um, yeah. Uh, welcome any new members. If you ever feel like working on your poetry to make a join. Please do. Thank you. Nice one. Okay, Patricia, it's up to you now to uh, to round out the meeting. Oh, really? Okay. Thank you very much. It was just an amazing evening of such a variety of wonderful poetry. Honestly, I mean that truly. It was just so entertaining, and we're. I mean. We've been a very small part of it, but we certainly will be collaborating again, I know, and I look forward to doing that. And I hope you make lots of money for Simon and to support yourselves. It has been a very hard time for writers and artists. So well done and thanks so much. Thank you. See you all soon.